Hey there and welcome, my name is Carlos Beretz and let's start talking about what is going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here, unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. Some links, they may be affiliate links, so that they can benefit me without costing you anything extra. And all the links, they will be in the description together with some timestamps, so you can jump to the point of your preference. This week, the first project that I want to mention is Dino Park by Armanda, a creator from RPG Latam, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene. In this solo journaling game, well, you want to be part of Dino Park and has now started working there for a season. This is the first part that brought dinosaurs back to life and you will be living and working there for 8 weeks. You will be doing daily chores, receiving calls, resolving them and helping to keep everything working correctly. Just beware of the catastrophe track because in this case you might need to run away. You play with a coin. 2d4, 2d6, 1d20, and a journaling method of your choice. A pretty interesting journaling game, if you ask me. Next is Tattoo by Shen or Shen Patrick Kane. It is a GMless tabletop RPG about tattoo artists, their clients, and the reality TV shows that puts them in the spotlight. As Shen puts it, it is a game for people that miss parties, party games, and the eventual friends that get shit talky as everyone is laughing sniking, drinking, relaxing in general while playing some games. This game is to be this kind of game as one who tries to convey what tattoo you want while another one tries to draw it. Now we talk about Pass the Spring by Lucky Newt Games. It is an Easter version of Pass the Game. It is a simple game about passing the fun to others, though you want to be careful of who you pass it to. As a spring, it Springs many things, flowers, animals, and even beginnings. Looking Newt Games has many versions of past the game, so I would urge you to check the ones based on other holidays as well if it strikes your fancy. Also coming from RPG Latam, we have Mo.mo by Cesar Capaco, a multi-setting tabletop RPG system that can be played solo or GMS. It was made to be easily read on a cell phone. But if you print it, it becomes a deck of 32 st standard playing cards. The character creation takes less than 5 minutes, and the goal is to create epic collaborative narratives without prep. The rules are based on Blades in the Dark and designed to push the story forward with complications and plot twists. It's really simple, I would say, but it's a simple way to have fun. From RPG Latam as well, we have Alexander Ship bringing us Micro Circuits, that is now on each funding. Micro Circuits is a game about robots delving dungeons, fighting tyranny and upgrading themselves. If you like it, Mega Man, Metabots, Transformers, this is the kind of game for you. Players take place of bots living in an electronic fantasy world full of adventures, However, there is always that organization trying to encrypt all robots and turn them into loyal assets. The game is inspired by classic OSR titles like Mouse Reader and Nave. With only two stats and a loose electronic dark fantasy setting, this game looks great, the illustrations are amazing, and I haven't even mentioned that you build your robot with parts to determine what skills they have. It's on each funding right now, it's almost funded the last time that I looked at it, but it deserves to be funded and I would very much like you to check it out. We mentioned already Night by Guillaume Genté, but the game was originally released in French with the name of Nuit, and now it has also 7 minutes of music for you to use in your games or whatever else that you mentioned Night. Just reminding you that the rules for the game and the game itself, to be exact, are in audio format, so you now have even more music for getting into this kind of vibe of the game, and for me it's very interesting this idea of having all the game made in audio format, so it's a very interesting thing to check it out and it embeds a lot of the vibe from the indie scene. Another release from this week is the Ashken version of Beneath the Dungeon Floor by Hodag, since it is an Ashken version, it is freely available for a limited time. It is a solo game where you generate your group of heroes and adventure from the village of Poe. Since 
it is also it is an Ash conversion, as I mentioned. It assumes that people will make some or even plenty of ruins themselves. It also assumes players being familiar with how combat turns work in tabletop RPGs in general, as it has the regular traditional rollover system where big number equals good. So it's very simple, but it's looking amazing because it really seems to be hand draw. And I would say that it's interesting to give a look at it as well. On gems, there is a dying war gem where the rules are simple. Create adventures set in futuristic ruins filled with fantastic technology and wondrous magic. Make sure to blur the lines of fantasy, magic, and technology. It also uh, should be system no neutral or OSR adjacent. There are some other rules as well that I would say for you to check it out if you want to submit for it. Uh, but you still have plenty of time to submit. Uh, I guess it's just started and you have up until May, if I'm not mistaken. So just check it out if you want to submit something for it or as always when I mention about gems, you can just check the games or the titles that are being submitted because they all convey the same theme of the gem. So check it out and you can find a lot of content for you as well. On articles and threads, I recommend the read of Across RPGC second newsletter and to subscribe to it if you are not yet. If you are not yet familiar with RPGC, the Southeast Asian tabletop RPG scene, this is the place to start. But more on the newsletter itself, besides the regular amazing news from RPGC, you also have an interview with Samuel Mui, the creator of Lumen Rider Core. Sam talks about the whole path of designing a game, getting some inspirations, as well as how was the experience of each funding it and how it, how they had the, the, this whole road of each funding and it was a huge success. Okay, for this week, I believe that's it. If you like the video, like the video, share, subscribe. You know how that works. You can pay me a coffee on coffee. You can buy my games on itch.io. Let me know in the comments what you are like about the series, what you are disliking, and I'll see you all in my next video. So, see ya.